Okay. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the AOS CX 1011 update for LACP fallback. My name is Corey Dow, and I'm a te technical marketing engineer for Campus Switching. Today's session will on the, update you on the latest updates to the LACP fallback feature. Okay, on the agenda, we'll cover an overview of LACP fallback, standard use cases, as well as how it's configured and what to watch out for when troubleshooting. And we'll finish with a demonstration. We'll show LACP fallback in action. Okay, so what is LACP fallback? It was a feature introduced in AOS CX 10 220. It was requested directly from a customer, and it basically provides a mechanism for dynamic lags to enable non bot in interfaces that would otherwise be blocked due to the absence of LACP PDUs. Initial support was limited only to VSX lags only, as that was the customer requirement at the time. With the introduction of more products into the AOS CX product line, it became clear we needed to add support for non VSX lags as well. There are now two CLI commands to enable the feature. So there's LACP fallback for preserving existing support for VSX lags, but now we have a, an additional command that's used for non VSX lags called LACP fallback static, and it works precisely the same way. As you can see, we've extended platform support now across the entire product line, including the OVA switch simulator. And as we'll cover, many use cases are enabled with this feature that fills a competitive gap with other switching vendors. Okay, so there are many use cases for the feature, but the four main use cases are highlighted on this slide. Uh, consider just some of the use cases. The first one, a factory defaulted downstream device where reboots and any bonded interfaces now become unbonded results in communication loss unless those ports are taken out of the link aggregation group on the distribution switch. In an ideal world, we shouldn't even need to touch the configurations on the upstream switch. Also, Z ZTP onboarding and central are also primary use cases that need support of the feature to first bring up ports as non-unbonded, then move them into an LACP dynamic lag once the configuration has been applied and the device is onboarded. And yet another use case uh, as a primary use case is Pixie Boot, uh, where servers may be loading their operating systems over ILO and they need to have an interface active before the lags have ever been created. This feature has been requested by many customers and it's become a deal inhibitor. Okay, so what I want to show on this slide is basically the original LACP fallback feature, again, introduced in 10.2.20 for VSX lags. Without LACP fallback, the ports connected to the VSX pair will be blocked until a LACP frames are present. But the port, once those packets are starting to show up, the port status changes from individual to collecting and distributing once the frames start coming in. And we'll see this coming up with the demonstration. So in this example, a distribution switch would implement the LACP fallback static feature on dynamic lags 10 and 20, so that the non-bonded interfaces are able to communicate. One difference from the VSX lags in this case with the LACP fallback static feature, you'll see that it only will bring up one, if there's more than one non-bonded interface, it's only gonna bring up one of them. And we'll see that in a moment. Okay, so this slide really just kind of shows the configuration. There's only one CLI command that's that enables the feature, LACP fallback static. And you can see the initial states where on the left-hand side, we have a lag essentially, but it's being blocked by absence of any LACP packets being received. And then the final state you see on the right hand side is once the access switch comes up and LACP frames are starting to be received, you can see that the states change and the ports are both up at this point. Uh, so this slide demonstrates simply the configuration. There'll be errors if you attempt to configure LACP fallback on a non VSX lag you'll receive errors and, and vice versa. There's no support for static lags. Yeah, just one main caveat to the feature is there's no guarantee the same port member will come up after any link toggles, reboots, or lag flaps, as it doesn't follow any deterministic order. The only guarantee is that only a single port member will be brought up in a given time. This slide just shows the REST API that it's changed from the original implementation of, of V1 now uh, with 10.11, we use a different URI, the REST v10.11 system interfaces URI is used if you wanted to configure you know, lag interfaces and or their attributes. And we'll show an example of that coming up. 
So configuration, again, there really isn't much configuration other than just setting the, the feature enabled on the lag interface. I just want to show some examples that you can use the REST API to configure it as well. So you can see the examples here. We've got the REST API login, you know, doing a get to see the features enabled or not. And then you can also, you can toggle the feature on or off just by setting the LACP fallback static options to true, true or false to turn it on or turn it off. Uh, troubleshooting is pretty simple. We do have debug commands for link aggregation, obviously, and, and diag dump commands. Primarily, you just use show LACP interfaces to make sure that you're seeing the right states. You, you, the box you see on the left here is what you want to see. Essentially, we've got multiple interfaces that are active in lag 10, but only one of them is brought up at, at a single time. And you can also see that NC lag is, is also set up in this, this case as well, but it's, it's using an LACP fallback instead of LACP fallback static. Okay, there's two new events that's been, that have been added for this LACP fallback static feature, which just simply show when the feature is enabled and disabled. Okay, again, it's a simple feature. So we're just gonna demonstrate what it looks like with the initial states and then the final states. So I've got, since it's supported on you know, all the platforms, I've just got a demo that I'm using the virtual switch image and you just one's acting as a distribution switch with three ports connected to, a, to an access switch where we just don't have any LACP configuration that's active. So with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. So, okay, so we just look at the default state. So I'll just run this command again. So you can see, and we look at the configuration. I mean, there's almost no configuration active at all, which is the whole point. So just have three ports, as I mentioned, you know, there's a lag interface on the distribution switch, but no lag interfaces on the access switch. And we just got, you know, VLAN one configured to pass and we'll be able to show that that's not gonna work, right? So it's unreachable at this point. So then if we just go into lag 10's configuration, all we're gonna do is just go in there and enable LACP fallback static. Okay, and so it brought up the, the first interface that you see there, port 111. Now we should be able to ping the access switch, which we can. And at any given time, obviously these interfaces are all, they're all up. It's just that LACP is blocking them. So on of note, like we said, the initial state is, is just the individual and the default neighbor state. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you just about the non-deterministic nature. So if I go into this interface and now I disable port 111, you'll see that it moves on to a different interface in this case. Um, we can still ping the access switch. And now if we actually go in and, and unshut 111, you'll see that it stays active with port 112. So it's just something to keep of note, but it, you can see at any, any given time, it's only ever gonna enable one one port at any given time to eliminate any potential for loops. And the other thing I want to show you is, so the final state, what we'll do is just go in, we'll add a checkpoint that enables LACP on, on those three ports on the access switch. Okay, and then we should see the states all change. And now we have all three interfaces active on both sides. And just that we've enabled lag 10, as we can see on all those ports. Okay, so that's the uh, end of that. And let's just go back. I think we have some additional resources. Uh, just some solution references for link aggregation, the user guide, a uh, good place to look for, for, for troubleshooting information. The, actual standard by IEEE and just that other vendors also call the feature LACP fallback. So if you look out there for different vendor support, you'll see other information. We can implement it pretty much the same way as everybody else does. 
and that's it. Thanks for your time and hope you enjoyed the session.